Hi, I'm Thomas Reitmeier, and on behalf of my collaborators, I'm excited to present our research on the opportunities and challenges of automatic speech recognition systems for low resource language speakers. So what exactly is a low resource language? The term has its origins in ASR research and draws attention to the dearth of publicly available high quality data. That's audio, um, audio recordings paired with accurate transcriptions. So low resource languages are typically smaller languages that are spoken outside of the global north. We adopt the term in our research to build bridges to ASR research. But we also want to highlight the normative connotations it carries and the stark juxtapositions the term creates. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's turn instead to the state of the art approaches that are creating so much excitement in the ASR research landscape. Here, unsupervised approaches, for example, Facebook's WAV to VEC, are showing good results. But they also require huge data sets, 53,000 hours, although most of it no longer needs to be transcribed. This raises the question of where does all that data come from? Here, Kate Crawford's book, The Atlas of AI, has been particularly illuminating. For example, techniques to collect language data often work on the problematic assumption that such data is interchangeable, that a love poem is the same as a legal argument. Furthermore, state-of-the-art approaches are increasingly becoming the exclusive provenance of organizations able to afford hundreds of thousands of dollars to train a language model, and often ignore the environmental costs. And they might not pause to think if that scraped love poem is there for the taking in the first place. But what can we learn from commercially available systems? In South Africa, where much of our research is situated, Google supports three languages, Zulu, Afrikaans, and English. It's great to see Zulu supported, but why Afrikaans and English, which are both Germanic languages? Why not Isigosa or another Bantu language? In post-apartheid and post-colonial South Africa, such questions rarely have a neutral answer. We want to address this gap through our research project and in partnership with community members from Lange. Lange is the oldest township in Cape Town, set aside for non-whites during apartheid rule and now classified as a previously disadvantaged area. It has 50,000 residents, largely first language Isikosa speaking. So we convened a series of remote hybrid design workshops with 12 Isikosa speaking participants from Lange surrounding a data collection and user engagement probe running on WhatsApp. We conducted two activities mediated through six WhatsApp groups. So each group consisted of a pair of participants. These were the active members in the group and a researcher who would then collect the data after the workshop. In the consent process and before each activity, we made it very clear to participants that researchers will be listening, transcribing, translating and ultimately training an ASR system using their speech data. I'm actually gonna skip the results of those activities and focus instead on the discussions surrounding WhatsApp voice messaging that these activities stimulated. What ended up happening is that after completing the activities, most participant pairs ended up chatting in their groups using voice messaging. Here we benefited from our unplatformed WhatsApp probe and the authentic and familiar form of expression it uh, represented to participants. These messages also yielded a very rich data set, but they also made the transcription task a lot more difficult and error prone. Here's a sample message. Notice how the speaker here uses elements of Isikosa, English, and even Afrikaans, a process referred to as code switching. In this sample, code switching happens within sentences, but in two instances, e clock tower and e waterfront, also within a word. A message like this highlights the challenges of developing ASR systems, but we should also celebrate the linguistic creativity and diversity that it showcases. Turning to the voice messaging practices more generally, we believe that the pervasive 
and inclusive practices surrounding voice messaging that participants reported are understudied, underdesigned for, and have to the very best of our knowledge not been reported at CHI or similar HCI venues. Beyond ASR, this is a significant contribution of our research. So participants actually reported sending messages every single day without fail. It's convenient in their eyes. So there are no spelling errors. It's also seen as, a very, as very positive and equalizing. It allows everyone to participate. But it's tricky keeping up with the amount of voice messages. And it's also not um, currently a bit possible to preview or edit a message before sending, like you would with a text message. It's also hard to find older voice messages. That involves a lot of scrolling and it's generally seen as not worth the effort if the, messages is, uh, if the message is older than a couple of months. To further understand and support voice messaging practices, we conducted a follow-up workshop focused specifically on voice messaging and involving an ISIC-OSA ASR probe that integrates with WhatsApp through the Android Share interaction shown here. The probe makes use of a baseline ISIC-OSA ASR system that we developed. The paper has all the relevant details. So given our modest amount of data, participants unsurprisingly talked about errors and typos and problems and sort of detecting the, the switches between languages. But there were also positive results. Again, the paper unpacks these. People thought it was pretty cool experimenting with advanced AI capabilities, but in their mother tongue. They identified recordings where the system actually performed quite well. They saw value and purpose, particularly in accessing transcriptions of voice messages to allow a kind of peeking at a voice message content, but doing so discreetly, for instance, if they were on public transport. We also deployed a Marathi system with community members in Dharavi in India, which we detail in the paper and unfortunately can't cover here. So to wrap things up, we recommend further research on the integration of and switching between voice and text modalities, particularly with low resource language speakers. And if you're designing voice messaging applications, please allow users to preview a message before sending it. And in HCI, I think it's really common practice to co-create user interfaces, scenarios, and use cases with community members. But in our research, we demonstrate that you can also generate representative data sets at the same time that are really invaluable. And most of all, we uh, thank our participants, our facilitators, transcribers, translators, and funders. Thank you very much.